Hello everybody. Today I'm going to talk about a case study regarding silver recovery. You know, we learned about silver precipitation of silver, dissolution of silver, and the chemistry of silver is very important for you to understand the metallurgy, hydrometallurgy and chemical metallurgy. This is the reason why we are focusing on silver recovery because easy to express, easy to understand. And uh, today we are going to talk about a case study, which means sometimes during lectures, I, I'm talking about uh, making money. We learn this kind of stuff and we need to make money out of it, okay? It has to help us to make money. Why would we learn about this kind of things? To to get, a, uh, to get a better position and to get uh, to lead a better life, to make money, uh, we increase our knowledge and get uh, become an informative person. Okay, and this is the reason uh, today I decided to talk about civil recovery from waste radiographic materials. And maybe you get excited about making money, but hang on a minute because this. The subject is old. I'm just giving you indication. I'm just giving give you hints, and you will learn the certain things. Then you will apply to new projects. This project is old one. Okay, it is seasoned project. Okay, it is gone. But there is still uh, important information in it. So I'm going to discuss this kind of information. I'm going to share, I'm going to cover these valuable informations with you, okay? Because during chemical metallurgical lectures, we outline certain things, but there is, uh, how can I put, uh, let me put this way. You can learn these things and you can run your own project. There are various uh, waste material and you can harness you can use this waste material to make money using this information that I'm going to outline here. Okay. And Burju Hoja uh, outlines certain experiments. And remember this experiments using this knowledge based on this experiment, you can create your own project. You can run your own business, hopefully. Okay. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about silver recovery from waste radiographic materials. Okay, look, okay. General information on silver, as you know, the symbol is AG. It comes from Argentum. Okay, atomic number is 47. This is a transition metal. Weight number is about 108 gram per mole. Density is 10.49 gram per cubic centimeter. Melting point of silver is 961 Celsius degree. Boiling point 2162 Celsius degree. Color is lustrous white, very, very bright, you know that. And the crystal structure is face center cubic structure, very soft, malleable. And the reduction potential is uh, almost 0.8 volt. As you know, this is the reduction potential much greater than that of hydrogen. And this is the reason why we call it a noble metal. Also, it's a precious metal. Silver is one of the oldest metals produced by human. Why? Because it is noble metal in the earth crust. It is found in pure state. Nabit in Turkish. It's pure state. You can directly use this silver. This silver is given by nature, but day by day, year by year, the concentration of silver decreases. And then we create new, we develop new processes to extract this silver. Okay, and this is a precious metal. The per kilogram is about 3000. Turkish era. It is used in ornaments, jewelry, high value tab tableware, utensils, silverware. It is called silverware. And currency coins, it is 
it can be used as a money, as a coin. Also, electrical contacts, conductors, silver is used in mirrors, as you know, and the, in the catalysis of chemical reaction, it can catalyst uh, certain chemical reactions. It is compound, are used in photographic films, and also silver can be employed as disinfectants and medical antimicrobial. Characteristics of silver is a very ductile metal, malleable, slightly harder than gold. Gold, you know, is very soft material. Silver has a brilliant white metallic luster, very bright, that can take a high degree of polish. You can polish silver material to certain very high degree of brilliance. It has the highest electrical conductivity of all metals. What does it mean? This is more conducting metal than gold. In the circuit boards, uh, gold is frequently used. Not this is because it's high conductivity. Many people uh, are misleading about this concept because corrosion resistance is highest of all among all metals. Okay, and this is the reason why we call gold the position or gold plating in the circuit, in the circuits, computer circuits, etc. But silver is higher conducting properties than copper and gold. Among all metals, pure silver has the highest thermal conductivity. The non-metal diamond is higher. But I'm just talking about the metals, the highest thermal conductivity, and one of the highest optical uh, reflectivities. Aluminum here is, is slightly better than silver in parts of visible spectrum. Silver halides, what is halides? Halogens, actually, chloride, iodide, uh, bromide, etc., are photosensitive and are remarkable for their ability to record a latent image that can later be developed chemically. Silver is stable in pure air and water, but tarnishes. It means it gets oxidized. Okay, silver is oxidized under ambient conditions at room temperature, 180 atmospheric pressure. When it is exposed to air, it gets corroded, unfortunately. And this is the reason you would remember, uh, probably. Uh, this is the reason why rhodium is preferred over silver, because rhodium uh, isn't quite uh, oxidized, like unlike silver. And in replace, uh, in place of silver, rhodium is frequently used, as we mentioned before. Silver is found in native form, also as an alloy with gold, it is called electron, and in ores containing sulfur, arsenic, antimony, or chlorine. Ores include argentite, silver sulfide, chloride, silver chloride, and pyrite, this is the compound of antimony sulfide uh, combined with silver. The silver metal is primarily uh, produced through electrolytic copper refining, nickel and zinc refining. What does it mean? While producing copper, nickel or zinc, and this metal, silver metal, is goes along with these uh, metals because it is a uh, noble metal. They can, uh, it, it is following these metals. And by the application of Parker's process using lead ores that contain small amounts of silver. Also, certain, to a certain degree, silver is found in lead ores. In 2010, Peru was the top producer of silver, 4,000 tons or 80% of the world's total, closely followed by Mexico and China. China uh, is not the leading 
role in this uh, process. Silver recovery is of great importance due to high cost of it and diminishing natural resources. As we always talk about this economic reasons and environmental reasons, we need to recover all precious metals, all metals actually. So uh, today I'm going to talk about a, a case study and this name of the study is, this is a paper, it's subject to, uh, is submitted to Canadian Metallurgical Quarterly. This is one of the best uh, journals in, in terms of hydrometallurgy and metallurgical processes. And the name of the uh, paper is Silver Recovery from Waste Radiographic Films by Cementation and Reduction. Uh, when I was in Istanbul Technical University, together with uh, Dr. Morjul and Professor Yujul, we carried out this uh, subject. Let me read out the abstract, then go back to slides again. Waste radiographic films can act as potential source materials for the recover valuable silver. In this study, in this case study, a chemical processing machine was adapted to recover silver metal from waste radiographic films. The films were dissolved in one molar nitric acid solution for three hours at Celsius degree to convert silver into silver nitrate. Subsequently, then the silver nitrate solution was treated using two different methods. The first involves cementation with fine iron powder and with fine zinc powder. These two well-known cementators, here cementators, iron and zinc metals are called cementators because cementation reaction takes place here. They are compared to each other with respect to purity of the final product and the recovery efficiency. The second method was sodium hydroxide precipitation. You know, sodium hydroxide can precipitate metals as metal hydroxides. You know that because we carried out the experiment, you would remember from chemical metallurgical laboratory. The treatment with zinc powder and iron powder result in the formation of metallic zinc powder in just one step. Silver oxide during the formation of sodium uh, hydroxide precipitation was then treated using two different methods. A treatment with a mixture of glucose and sugar and sodium hydroxide to yield metallic silver and heat treatment in which silver oxide was converted to silver metal at 500 Celsius. TGA analysis, you know that this analysis, revealed that at 400 Celsius, silver oxide entirely composed in the silver and oxygen. In detail, uh, I will give the information further in the slides. With the exception of the powder produced by glucose reduction, all the powders would easily find industrial application. In addition, by using relatively inexpensive chemicals, these applied processes show promise for further scaling up. Okay, let's go back to let's go back to slides. Probably most of you, you wouldn't remember uh, this waste radiographic film. In hospitals, uh, maybe in 20 years ago, maybe 30 years ago, uh, in hospitals, we used to use radiographic films. But nowadays, uh, they can replace with computer based uh, systems. And this is the reason no longer we use this kind of materials. In the past, uh, people made money out of these uh, recovery processes. But today, and this is important, today you cannot make money because we have run out of these radiographic films. We no longer use this kind of films. Just I'm going to brief information regarding the chemistry of silver, okay? These waste radiographic films are cut into pieces to make sure the solution in uh, nitric acid 
leaching in nitric acid. What's going to happen here? Let me write down here. Silver found in radiograph films react react with nitric acid to form silver nitrate and NIX and water. Instead of nitric acid, we cannot use any other acid because most of these acids have no action on silver. Only nitric acid can dissolve away silver. This is the reason why we carry out leaching process using uh, nitric acid media. And in this way, we produce silver nitrate. And you know, cementation. One of the best reduction methods, one of the best producing recovery methods, using iron as a base metal or active metal and zinc. Both can work very well. Cement with iron powder, we produce submicron silver metal powder and using zinc powder, submicron, the lower than one micron actually, it is called submicron silver metal powder. Another method, method is addition of sodium hydroxide. This is a very strong base. What happens here? Silver nitrate plus sodium hydroxide. Silver hydroxide plus sodium nitrate. And during the precipitation process, this silver hydroxide turns into silver oxide. Actually, silver hydroxide means silver oxide plus water, but it removes its water, turns into or converted into silver oxide. And two other different methods is applied to produce metallic silver powder. Heat treatment at 500 Celsius to make sure metallic silver powder is produced. And addition of uh, glucose, which is sugar, can uh, be successfully employed to drop to precipitate silver uh, from silver oxide. And metallic silver powder is obtained. Here is uh, agitation rate is investigated. You know, agitation plays a uh, plays an important role in this kind of uh, dissolution reaction or reduction reaction or recovery reductions. And this is the reason why we investigated. This is a case study. Okay. And we need to investigate almost all parameters and then get the results. And from these results, we get the optimum conditions. Today, I'm trying to outline this kind of uh, case study. So you can learn how to conduct research. This is important actually. And this is dissolution efficiency. When we don't use agitation, dissolution efficiency is about 35% which is not so bad, actually. When we increase up to uh, 200, it increases, gets higher, about 52%. Furthermore, about 300 RPM, rotation per minute, actually. This is 17. And it, after 300 RPM, it goes down. So in this, reaction, 300 RPM or 400 RPM would be enough to make sure silver is dissolved in the solution. Waste radiography films can act as potential source materials for the recovery of valuable silver. Okay, but this is old method. 
customer and still you can produce valuable silver this kind of waste material the fumes were dissolved in one molar nitric acid solution for three hours at 70 celsius to convert silver into silver nitrate and cementation with fine iron and zinc powders were applied let's go back to Let's go back to paper. And recovery efficiency is C0 minus CT. CT is the concentration at the end of the experiment. C0 is the initial civil concentration in this specific uh, experiment specific process. Mm, we make sure it's about 4.5 gram per liter silver is employed. Let's see, this is the dissolution of silver. I just mentioned it. And this is the agitation that we talked about. And this is the temperature here. When we increase the temperature, so uh, dissolution efficiency increases. This is the expected result. This one also is expected results and the time the more time we apply the better dissolution efficiency we, this is the expected results the efficiency increases so there should be an optimum okay say mm, one molar is good enough to dissolve silver but how long duration is important so we need to determine the duration the time and this is the uh, okay this is the cementation reaction okay iron goes to and this iron goes to iron 2 plus gives of two electron it is oxidation so this is plus 0.44 volt. On the other hand, zinc goes into solution, dissolving the solution, which is oxidation of zinc, zinc 2 plus, plus 2 electron, and oxygen volt is plus 0.76 volt. And this is the net cementation reaction. Silver dissolved in the solution. This is metallic powder. Replacement reaction takes place, whereby metallic silver is produced and the metal dissolved in the solution and what is this is <clears throat> semi or half pile reaction urine pill reaction because this is carried out in one beaker in one compartment this reaction takes place so we can uh, successfully Calculate E potential for iron, for example. Reduction of silver is 0.8 volt, and oxidation of iron is at about 44 volt, and the potential, total potential, 1.24 volt. When we calculate for this reaction, for um, zinc, zinc, zinc 2 plus 0.76 volt and silver 0.8 volt. So total E total would be 1.756 volt. This is cell potential. But remember, important thing remember this this reaction takes place this reaction takes place in one beaker or one compartment in one place it is uh, oxidation and reduction takes place in one beaker and or in one compartment.
So let's go back to this slide again. Sodium hydroxide is a strong based, was used to precipitate silver oxide. Many other metal uh, hydroxide can be produced by this method, you know, from the uh, laboratory experiment. A treatment with mixture of glucose, this is sugar and sodium hydroxide to yield metallic silver because silver, uh, sorry, sodium hydroxide has no action on silver. So there is no, uh, there is nothing wrong about usage of sodium hydroxide because sodium hydroxide has no action on silver. Other method is silver oxide can be converted into elemental silver or metallic silver and oxygen gas at T is about 500 Celsius. Thermodynamically speaking, at elevated temperature, the system needs to give off oxygen gas. At room temperature, temperature 298 Kelvin, silver gets oxidized. That's right. This oxygen is taken by air that we breathe. And it forms silver oxide. But when we increase the temperature up to 400 or 500, thermodynamically speaking, the system needs to give off oxygen gas. And thereby we produce elemental silver. And this is the reason heat treatment is a successful method for precious metals like palladium, platinum, gold, iridium, osmium, etc. This is the PGM metals. But this is not valid, ladies and gentlemen, this is not valid for iron oxide. You can never isolate iron from iron oxide with the help of heat treatment. And this is the reason for reduction of iron oxide, we need to use hydrogen gas, hydrogen gas, carbon monoxide, or elemental carbon. This is the major, major difference. Difference, this is major difference. Here, temperature plays an important role in this kind of dissociation reaction, as we discussed earlier. Here, time also plays a vital role. As you see here, when we use 0.5, 30, 30 minutes, you get 75% dissociation efficiency. And when we increase uh, temperature uh, time, about three hours, then we get almost 100% dissolution efficiency, and this is the vital role. And this is uh, expressed in scientific literature. This is in line with the scientific literature. And weight ratio here, when you use uh, Weight ratio 0.5, for example. Here is about 85. This belongs to iron. And when we use 0.5 weight ratio, we get more than 90% zinc because zinc is more active than iron and this is the reason less amount of zinc is more successful than iron. When we increase the weight ratio so we get almost 100% efficiency regarding of 
what metal we use, either zinc or uh, iron, make sure uh, silver is precipitated with almost 100% efficiency. Here is the good example, pH versus precipitation efficiency. You know, silver in nitrate form in solution upon addition of sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide increases pH value of the solution and pH at seven, we get below 40, uh, below 40 percent efficiency. When we increase the amount of sodium hydroxide, which means we, when we increase pH value of the solution, here almost 11, the reduction or precipitation is complete. So we can precipitate all the silver out of solution. And here normally metal hydroxide is produced, but in this specific example, we produce silver oxide. This is the TGA chromatic thermal analysis. Here, 100% silver oxide. When we increase temperature, it will down to 99.5. And water, physically bonded water, it removes step by step. And after this temperature range, the decomposition actually starts and here at 400 celsius precipitate uh, decomposition reaction is entirely over what is decomposition reaction silver oxide step by step uh, gives off oxygen gas to get the equilibrium and where where why silver metal is produced and step by step here as you see step by step here oxygen gas removes and the percentage decreases and here the percentage goes to about 93 percent which is metallic silver for example this is 100 gram after removing all uh, silver this corresponds to 93 gram and there is no point increasing temperature further because we get metallic silver this is 100 percent metallic silver there is no oxygen in it and this is called conversion of silver oxide into metallic silver by heat treatment i'd like to mention that maybe mercury oxide can decompose into mercury palladium oxide decomposed into palladium, platinum oxide, etc. This kind of precious metals can be uh, produced by this method. On the other hand, chromium oxide cannot be produced by this method because uh, this metals, this base metal, the active metals like zinc, iron oxide, cannot uh, isolate iron by this method always we need to add other reducing agents like carbon monoxide hydrogen gas or aluminium sodium and magnesium this kind of active metals can be used when we use this kind of metals we call it metallothermic reduction metallothermic reduction and when we use carbon monoxide, this is indirect reduction. When we use carbon, this is called direct reduction. There are various ways to produce elemental form of metal oxide. But, you know, silver is a, a noble metal and it's difficult to be corroded, very difficult to oxidize. And so you can isolate oxygen quite easily upon increasing the temperature of the process. And this uh, process takes place in furnace, high temperature furnace. I'd like to mention another thing. Is it possible sometimes we use bracelets, uh, rings, pendants, etc., based on 
silver, you, you cannot employ this uh, black silver in the uh, furnace that we use in houses because this silver also contain copper. When we use furnace at home, this copper turns into copper oxide, so it gets black and black. It gets more black. So do not attempt to do this reaction at home. Okay, uh, this is the conversion efficiency of silver oxide to silver versus weight ratio of silver oxide to glucose. Glucose is sugar based on uh, carbon can be successfully used to uh, reduction of silver oxide. But how much glucose we need to employ? When we, you know, thermodynamically speaking, when we uh, use appreciable amount of glucose, the efficiency would be increased as we expect here. And when this uh, ratio is about 1.3, 50% conversion efficiency is employed. And when we employed about 0.6, which is more glucose we use based on uh, silver oxide, then almost 100% conversion efficiency is employed. And silver oxide, C8. This is glucose under the media of sodium hydroxide for a certain time, this silver oxide converted into metallic silver. This is kind of reduction. Because this is no metal, you can reduce silver many other ways. We choose glucose actually in this present study. Here is the exactly pattern of silver. This indicates that this line this line are belong to metallic silver. And this is, uh, we need to characterize our sample. No matter what we do, okay, we, when we produce a, a product, we need to use certain characteristic characterization techniques. Titration methods that we employ in laboratory, you know, silver in nitric acid and also titrated with potassium chloride or sodium chloride. Then we can calculate how much silver we produce. Uh, this is a characterization method. We need to <coughs> run this kind of characterization methods. Let's look at the, another characterization method. This is scanning electron uh, micrographs, SEM. This belongs to zinc, and this belongs to iron cementation. They resemble each other. As you see, this is cementation reaction. And this one is glucose reduction. Uh, teeny tiny small particles, you know, uh, you see. Uh, both are two micron, and the, uh, here is the two microns here, and this is the heat treatment. The particle size is greater because we, we use here heat treatment at 500 Celsius. So the particles tend to co coagulate, agglomerate, and to form bigger particles, as you see here. Bigger particles are obtained here. And uh, here is the uh, smallest particles are obtained by the help of glucose reduction. Let me summarize what we did, uh, what we carried out here. In the present work, a chemical processing was adopted to recover silver metal from vestigiographic films. The films uh, were dissolved in one more nitric acid. Mm, this can uh, dissolve a silver, you know, unlike uh, 
high chloric acid and salicylic acid. So, the solution for three hours, eight, seven Celsius to convert silver into silver nitrate. The polymer substrate, which is left over after treatment, can be further recycled. In this uh, specific uh, research project, we did not interested in the polymer substrate. And this is the reason why we, we can talk about polymer substrate. The prepared, in this way, prepared silver nitrate treat, treated with two different methods. The first one, uh, cementation with zinc and iron powders and sub-micron sized metallic silver powder was uh, manufactured by this cementation methods, replacement reactions. The silver proteins were found to be 99.99 and 99.92% respectively, which can directly be used in various applications. Zinc proved to be a better cementator than iron in terms of silver recovery. As I uh, explained earlier, zinc, uh, zinc is more active than iron, and this is the reason uh, it's proved to be better cementator than iron. Instead of zinc, iron, aluminum also can be employed for the reduction of silver. Another method that is applied in this research project, precipitation by sodium hydroxide, which is a strong uh, base. After silver oxide was precipitated by uh, sodium hydroxide, metallic silver was then easily produced with two different methods. Glucose reduction in alkali media and heat treatment at 500 Celsius, respectively, which resulted in pure 49 purity. 99.99% silver is produced by this method. 39 silver is acceptable in most silver industries. 39, 99.9% silver is acceptable in most silver industries. Since the purity of silver produced by glucose reduction is less than 99.90%, is about 99.58%, it requires further purification. This is okay, this is uh, very successful, but this is not okay. Uh, so we need to make sure it is further purified. These powders can be employed in the production of silver nitrate, which is used in antibacterial and pharmacological applications, in the production of silver cyanide, uh, which is the main component of silver plating beds in jewelry, and also alloying element. Powders produced by cementation exhibit similar properties, as I explained earlier, and are quite inexpensive and straightforward to be produced. But ethylene solutions emerge following the reaction and need to be discarded in an environmental friendly way. How we can treat this solution using again sodium hydroxide can precipitate iron hydroxide of if it is if it is uh, trivalence iron three hydroxide also zinc hydroxide can successfully be precipitated using sodium hydroxide. The one that was produced using glycol is easy to be produced and no harmful solutions are produced following the reaction, but the product quality is worse than the others as silver content is only 99.58%. Thus, it needs to be further refined as explained earlier, but it still can be used as an alloying element in silver ornaments etc. Thank you very much for your uh, listening, for your attention. If you have any question, you can drop me email and you, you know how to reach me. Okay, just uh, think about the situation that I try to explain. And if you uh, raise a question, you are more than welcome to ask me. Thank you very much.